All right, so in the last video, we set up the blob brush tool using a, a tablet to be pressure sensitive. I'm going to make the size just a little bit smaller, and you'll see the variation will change with me. And I'm setting it to be a little bit more smooth than accurate. And I'm just doing solid black puddles. That's why it's called a blob brush. If I barely press, I can get little indications here, just like with a, a brush full of black ink or a fountain pen. If I wanted it to be a really technical pen, I could set it to have no variation. And then I can set a point width and it would always do that. But I, I think it's important for a coloring book spot illustration to have a lot of variations in thickness and to not be afraid of a lot of open space. So how do I do a, a brick texture, you know, without having to draw each brick for a coloring book? Well, I just indicate the edges of a few bricks. And if I do too much, I can always use my eraser tool. Now the eraser tool is great. You can set the size, but you can't set it to be smooth, right? So for the eraser tool, I mostly just use it to take away. I don't try to get it to kind of draw for me. And then it's always going to be in this kind of circular shape too. So sometimes the eraser tool can, can mess with the personality of your inking. Now, on buildings that are kind of man-made and have lots of hard edges, this kind of blobby, really versatile brush doesn't always make the most sense. But when it gets to things that are organic, like the bushes and the butterfly, or characters, or clouds, you're going to see where the blob brush really helps, especially with that smoothing. Because I don't have the steadiest hand. I am much more of a sketcher than an animator. And so it's really nice to have this option where it kind of smooths out my curves for me and really captures them. And of course, I can go off script here and deviate from my sketch whenever I want to. To add variations on the shapes. And if I ever want to correct it, I can always use the pencil tool, the eraser. Vectors give you so much control. But just look at this beautiful shape right here. Ah, that is really hard to ink by hand, right? But the blob brush can just do it in a swoop. Now, we can also use the tablet within a raster program like Photoshop or Photop. In Photop, we can even set the brush to have a smoothing factor. Though strangely, we can't do that in Photoshop, though I'm sure it's a feature that they are thinking about adding because it's something a lot of popular uh, iPads and app drawing software has kind of automatically smooth your lines a bit. But that's why I love using the blob brush in Illustrator. And then the added benefit of these being perfectly clean vectors, you know, not pixelated at all. You can see it kind of even out my curve. <laughs> as I draw. And because it's the blob brush, I can always kind of merge everything together just by drawing through them. Because I'm asking some of you to draw buildings, I gave myself the demo of a building with, or of an image with multiple buildings and different architectural features and lots of complexity. That doesn't mean I have to draw all of it. 
I can cover a lot of it up with this organic stuff. Like the bushes, the trees, the butterfly, the gazebos. And I'm always thinking about how to leave open space for the second graders that this is made for to color because it's a spot illustration and it's made to be reproduced. But even though I want open space for them to color, it doesn't mean that I don't have areas of what are called full bleed that might just be solid black shapes because that can be helpful in the coloring as well. So I might move between some of this architectural drawing, trying to keep it loose, not be too fussy. Remember you can angle it using the hand rotation tool to find angles that are better for your hand. And then maybe moving and doing some of this organic stuff. Blades of grass, bushes, I recommend every illustration of buildings also have some organic stuff around it, just like we have on campus. Okay, here I am with my blob brush. Here is a very kind of lyrical, soft curve. Often, just like in, in traditional inking, you have to piece curves together like this. And then I'll clean them up with the pencil tool. I wish I could have a Command Z while I was inking on traditional art. And for some illustrations, you can just draw right in Illustrator. You don't even need to be working on top of a sketch necessarily. You can see how the blob brush lets you be pretty expressive, pretty individual. But generally as a professional doing illustrations, before you get to finishing work, you usually need to get it approved. So sketches are an important part of the process. And being able to show your work process always makes it easier to get the next job. And it makes it easier to justify what you want to get paid for the next job because you can show the effort that goes into it. Yeah. So if it gets too fussy, just remember you have the pencil tool there. And you can set that to different levels of smooth or not. And then the blob brush can always merge as well. Let's see. Figure out the right way to resolve this. I love the magic pen scissors of that pencil tool. As long as you start on the path and end on the path, you can recut your vector shapes. Nice little tree there. Back to the blob brush. So if everything is working, this is my favorite way to make digital inking because having a clean vector that you're creating as you go makes it so you're not having to clean up a trace of a vector later because you're cleaning it up as you draw. Oh, 
All right, continuing with the digital inking and the blob brush. Just keeps going. I just love how it smooths out the lines for me. And I get a little weird. And what's tricky is always corners of man made things. And all these lines on windows. Try not to stress about them too much. Just carry them through with confidence. Gonna fill it in with black every once in a while. And leave some open space where I think it's possible. Now here, for these lines, I want those to be kind of an even weight, so I can always go to my blob brush settings and take the variation down to no variation and set an exact technical line that gives me an exact weight. So I think for this will be about eight point. I can always type that in if I need to. I'm having troubles with the sliders. But I always wanted to be at 100% opacity. And then while I have that even weight, I can go ahead and fill in some of those more technical lines with that weight. So if I'm having trouble with the corners always tapering down because I'm lifting off of the tablet, Turning that variation off can be helpful. And some people like to do spot illustrations with very, very even weight control. So they still use the blob brush, they still use the smooth function, but they set it to an exact size without any variation. And that's just like having it not be pressure sensitive at all. The difference between technical pins and brush pins. Or back in my day, rapidograph pins versus brushes with ink. Ah. Ah. <laughs> Sometimes the smooth will round things, especially corners, when you'd rather it didn't. So now I'm using this thinner weight for these window crossbars. I can use the blob brush to fill in with black. And I'm using that curved perspective so things don't all need to line up and it will 